is 20 years ago today. You know, many of you who are subscribed to my channel are younger than that, or are so young that you wouldn't remember what happened 20 years ago today. It was the Loma Prieta earthquake. It was the largest earthquake to hit the Central California area since the great 1906 quake, and yet it was about 30 times less powerful than that one. But it was a very significant event. Killed dozens of people and injured thousands. And I was in it. And I thought, since many of you may be too young to remember it, I would uh, recall my experiences. I was 19 years old. Now, many people think of this earthquake as being a San Francisco thing. But in fact, San Francisco was about 80 miles away from the epicenter of the earthquake. I was about three miles away from the epicenter of the earthquake. And uh, I was at home. I lived in, in Capitola, California, right on the border between Capitola and SoCal. Uh, I lived with my mom in a double-wide mobile home, kind of like a big house-sized mobile home. And she was not home. I was, I was at home. I was on my Amiga, which is a type of computer that was very popular in those days. Uh, and I was looking at the clock because she wanted me to record the World Series, the baseball championship game. It was the Battle of the Bay. The San Francisco, 40, uh, San Francisco Giants and the Oakland Athletics 1989 World Series. They were playing for the championship. And the television coverage started at 5 o'clock, and I was you know, looking, I saw that it was, it was past 5. And, uh, but I was working on, on this music program, and it was not a music program that I usually use, but that has neat demo tunes on it. And I was pe picking apart the voices. The, the, the tune I know had the word death in the title. I don't remember the exact name of the tune, but that's kind of ironic. And uh, I knew that the first few minutes of the, of the TV coverage would be, would be just recalling the previous game. Uh, so I was looking at the clock saying, well, at 5.05, I'll, I'll start, you know, I'll stop and go out and start my mom's VCR. We didn't get to 5.05. At 5.04, I heard a bang in the next room, the window, and then I teleported into the doorway. Uh, I say teleported because I don't remember actually getting up and moving across into the doorway. The thing with being so close to a major earthquake is it happens almost instantaneously. Um, in San Francisco, you see a lot of videos of people who are kind of feeling it out because it starts slowly rolling and eventually they, they, they get the cover. And even the TV coverage from the World Series game at Candlestick Park, you can hear the announcer start to stammer on his words and the crowd noise gets louder. And then finally, you know, uh, Al Michaels says, I tell you what, we're having an earth! And then the signal's cut off. Uh, but there was no warning where we were, and it was much stronger where we were than San Francisco ever got, uh, which you'll see on a, a animation here. So you look at the red dot on the animation, and that's where I was. And watch how quickly it goes into the yellow zone of heavy shaking and the red zone of severe shaking. Compare that to San Francisco, where you see they start with kind of moderate shaking, and eventually they get into the, the green zone of, you know, some, some fairly significant shaking. So I was in the doorway, but normally you, know, you get in the doorway and you hold the hands right on the door frame. But the shaking was so severe that I would be thrown out, I realized. So I had to put my arms all the way out and hug the wall and stretch my legs out just to just to stay on my feet. This was the only time I ever felt vertical motion in an earthquake. Usually you feel side to side motion, but this was up and down. And I, I seem to recall one of my cats running down the hall during this. I had my head on the hallway side, not my room side. Um, my cats ended up staying under my bed for about five days. Uh, they didn't eat, they didn't drink, they didn't, you know, do their business, if you know what I mean. Uh, they just stay there to stay safe. And finally the, the, the shaking stopped. 
I distinctly remember my first words were, holy shit! <laughs> and everything that was in my room was on the floor, everything that was on my desk was on the floor. One good thing to come with the earthquakes, it made me clean my room. But the uh, most amazing thing was my, my monitor, which is my, what I used as a television monitor, which is a Commodore 1702 monitor, which I still use. It still works, it's still, it's still in great shape. Um, although it does have a crack in it, because it fell. It used to be raised on a wooden hutch. And it fell off the hutch, put a big dent in the desk right here, and then it fell onto the stereo that I had on the bottom here. And on top of the stereo I had my disc boxes. And, you know, in those days, computers didn't have hard drives, well, unless you were really rich. And uh, so everything was on floppy disk. You're on, you, know, you turn the computer on, you put in the floppy disk that has the operating system, and whatever programs you want to run, whatever files you want to put on. And so they were kept in these plastic boxes. And the monitor fell on those and broke one of the plastic boxes. Well, a piece came off the back of the, of the box. I found that piece about six feet in the other direction when I cleaned my room. I don't know if it was airborne and the ground moved under it and it landed, or if it was on the papers and it just kind of shimmied over during the shaking. Uh, in our living room, we had three foot high speakers that were on stands. One of them was halfway across the living room, the other one was still on its stand. A very surprising way your earthquakes work like this. Everything in the kitchen was you know, on the floor. Everything was falling off the walls. Now, at the time, I didn't understand how earthquakes shaking, you could kind of tell how far away it was based on how it shook. And I saw, I, I, we always grow, grow up hearing about the 1906 quake and how another one's going to hit San Francisco. So my assumption was, you know, this must have happened in San Francisco and if it was this bad here, how bad was it there? Uh, and so I, I got my radio and I started tuning, I wanted to tune into, to, you know, to a San Francisco station. Although, when I went outside to check the neighbors, a neighbor was not home. His home had fallen off its foundation and fell down onto the ground. The support struts were going through the floor into the living room, into the kitchen, just poop, boom, boom, just, just poked through the floor. Uh, so I went and turned off his gas because I didn't want to risk having gas leak. I turned off our own gas, even though we didn't have a gas leak, just, just to be safe. And, uh, and so I got the radio trying to find San Francisco stations and, and that's when I heard that portion of the Bay Bridge had collapsed and so I, this time I still thought it was, it was in San Francisco, not having any real, any concept that it was actually first basically under my feet. And uh, so a friend eventually came over and you know, my mom came, came, got home eventually and a friend, my old friend Gretchen came over to make sure she was checking all the, the local Santa Cruz online community. You know, in those days there weren't many people online so it was a very tight-knit group, uh, and, uh, and she wanted me to, to go with her and check out everybody else, but my mom was like freaked out, and she's like, no, you're not going anywhere. And in fact, uh, she didn't let me sleep in my own room that night. She wanted to keep me near her. And uh, so we had a bar we had just bar barbecued steaks that we had in the freezer that night. And uh, on the radio, the, San the Santa Cruz station was the first time I ever heard the emergency broadcast system used you know, for real, instead of just a test. In those days, it was a long tone, ee, instead of the new <laughs> that they do. And but it was so anticlimactic. It was just the the announcers on the radio station said, "Okay, we're going to activate the emergency broadcast system now, so that we can boost our power and get news out of you know Santa Cruz County to the as far as away as Nevada." And so and I told it on. They came back and they introduced themselves to all the new listeners that they were hearing. Uh, outside the earthquake zone. And uh, our power actually came back on the next day, which is really surprising. I went down into Capitola, downtown Capitola, and all the telephone poles were just uh, like random directions. <laughs> none, none of them had fallen down, but they were all over the place. Um, chimneys were all destroyed. And, uh, glass was just all over the streets in, in Capitola. All the storefronts, the glass was just in the middle of the road. And I went to the piano store and bought a, a book of sheet music. And uh, the buildings in Capitola survived. Uh, downtown Santa Cruz was another story. 